Now I'm quite a fan of a YouTuber called Mike Jevons who recently did a week on vegan. He's actually quite an interesting YouTuber. He does some fantastically funny takedowns of infomercials. But he also sometimes does a week on this or that. And recently he did a week on vegan. And he got some criticism for that because a lot of the things he tried in his week on vegan food were packaged or ready-made vegan meat substitutes. And so he got a lot of feedback saying that's not what vegan food's really about. Now, he's put out a follow-up video saying, well, you tell me what you think I should cover. So this is going to be my recipe for a vegan burrito. Now, right at the top of this, I should say I am not a vegan. I'm not even a vegetarian. I actually quite like eating a wide variety of foods. But that aside, I am capable of cooking a vegan meal. And so let's have a go at it today. So the first thing we're going to do is just forget about this idea about what are we going to do to replace meat. Forget that. We are not going to talk about what we're doing to replace meat. That's the last time we're going to mention it. What we're going to talk about today is what are we going to do to build flavour and to make a nutritious and satisfying dish out of these vegetable components. So what we've got today is we've got some nice sweet onions, carrots, celery, we've got some green lentils, and we've got some peeled wheat. Now peeled wheat, you can't find it everywhere. This I got from a Mediterranean supermarket, and that's where you're likely to find it. It's popular in Turkey and the Middle East, and it's just wheat that's been dehusked. It's like um, you can get cracked wheat, but this is the uncracked version of it, actually. It's just had the husk taken off, and it's quite good for casseroles and things like that. It will swell up when it's cooked, so it will absorb flavour, but also it will provide a bit of chew, a bit of texture, and a bit of interest in the dish. We've got some passata. We've got butternut squash. And we've got a selection of spices and flavourings. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make a sofrito. So we're going to chop up these onions, carrots and celery and give them a gentle fry in some vegetable oil so that we can get a nice flavour base going. I'm going to assume for the sake of this video that you know how to chop up vegetables. I'm not going to show all of those bits, we'll just show the preparation of the, the actual food itself. I think I might have forgotten to mention the red pepper, there's going to be a red pepper in there as well. So here we are, we've got carrots, celery red peppers and onions in our pan. I've got some olive oil. I'm just going to put a bit of oil over that. We're going to cook that over a lowish heat because I just want to gently soften and caramelize all of these vegetables. I'll give them a little stir first just to get them coated in oil so nothing burns. Now you might be thinking oh well, I don't like celery or I don't like carrots. Well You've got to include them. Celery in this dish won't taste like celery, it will taste like flavour. What's actually going to happen here is as these vegetables cook down and caramelise, they're going to release all sorts of flavour components, and in especially celery actually. When celery is slowly fried down, it becomes deeply savoury. So we're not going to leave it out. Because, anyway, this is a vegan dish. If you're going to eat vegan, you're going to eat some vegetables. Get over it. The other thing you might be thinking is, where's the chilli? Now, for this, I probably need to explain how chilli works in my family. Not all of us have the same tolerance for chilli heat. And so, typically, when I cook something like chilli, I'll cook it with minimal heat, so the chilli won't go in at the start of the dish. And then I'll add the heat with some hot sauce, actually, at the table. That's not the ideal way to get flavour into a chilli, but when you've got a family who like differing levels of heat in their dishes, it's about the only way you can do it. So that's how I do it. If, if I was cooking this just for me, I'd be in there with some chilli flakes, probably some fresh chillies, maybe some hot sauce actually at the early stages of the recipe, but as it is, we've got to do that at the end. So while that's cooking away, and it's just gently sizzling away in there in the pan, Let's get some mushrooms ready. So these are dried mushrooms that I dried myself last autumn. And there's a mixture of oyster mushrooms and chanterelles and horse mushrooms and a couple of other species in there as well. You can buy dried mushrooms in the stores and they're very, very good. But I'm just going to use some of these ones that I've dried myself. So I'm going to use a good couple of handfuls 
of these dried mushrooms in a jug. Let's just have a sniff of those now. Yeah, really, really deeply mushroomy, savoury aroma coming off of those. So, so just cover them in cold water and I'm going to leave them to soak for at least half an hour, ideally longer. And those will soak, they'll rehydrate, they will puff back up and they'll become more like their original texture. But this liquid here as well will become this amazingly rich mushroom stock. I'm going to be cooking today in this slow cooker, which you may know as a crock pot. You don't have to have a slow cooker to make this, you could do this in a casserole dish in a low oven. And so ready in the slow cook, I'm going to put half a cup of the green lentils and half a cup of peeled wheat. We're also going to put our spices in here ready. So I've got some sweet paprika. I'm going to put in two nice big heap teaspoons full of sweet paprika. We've got some cumin and I'm going to put about probably half a teaspoon full of cumin in there. About that much. I've got star anise powder and again less than half a teaspoon full here probably, about that much. I've got a vegetable stock cube. Now if you make your own vegetable stock you could use that, but I'm just going to crumble this straight in and it will dissolve into the liquids that we're going to add a bit later. So I'm just crumbling that into the mixture. So that's some of the spices. Let's go outside and get some herbs. Okay, we've already got some bay leaves in there. We'll have some rosemary. I think we'll have some nice sage from here. In fact, I think we'll pick two little sprigs of sage from there. Uh, we'll have some thyme. This is Turkish thyme. And we've got savoury. Now this is a really good herb to go with beans and pulses. So we're going to have a good bit of that. And marjoram over here. Which is related to oregano. So the bay leaves will go in a hole. The other herbs I've chopped up and we'll put them in chopped up. Now if you don't have your own herb garden or if you don't have access to fresh herbs, mixed dried herbs are perfectly acceptable here. Really good product actually, these mixed dried herb. For instance this one, they're really good. Herbs dry very well and so dried herbs are quite acceptable in a dish like this. So back over at this pan we can see the vegetables have now gone translucent and we can actually see some colour coming out of the carrots there and the peppers into the oil. I'm going to keep on going because I actually do want to caramelise these vegetables a little bit to get the maximum flavour out of them. So we will keep on going until these start to just go brown at the edges and start to reduce right down. The other thing we're doing here is driving off moisture out of these so we are concentrating flavour into them. While we're waiting for those other vegetables, let's just take a look at these mushrooms again. It's only been 10 minutes, and yet already we've got a golden mushroom stock appearing in the liquid here. And these mushrooms are starting to swell back up to their original size and volume. Okay, we're probably down now to the last five minutes of cooking for these vegetables. They're not showing very much colour yet but the sound of the cooking has changed, which means a lot of the water has been driven off and we're now cooking, we're frying, rather than steaming them, which is where all the flavour is going to develop. So at this point, I'm just going to add three cloves of garlic, chopped up, into the mix. We don't want to burn the garlic, but it's good because it will be all mixed in with the onions and peppers and celery, so it won't burn. Okay, we're getting very, very close now. So the vegetables are starting to go golden and a little bit brown at the edges, and we're starting to see a bit of caramelization on the bottom of the pan there. Now, I don't want to take it too far because it will burn and get bitter, but the, the aroma that's coming off of these vegetables right now now remember, I'm not a vegetarian, 
or a vegan, but this is actually making my stomach rumble and my mouth water. There's a really richly savoury aroma coming off of these just cooked vegetables right now. So let's get these into the slow cooker now they've cooked down and then we'll assemble the rest of the dish and leave it to go. So we'll just get those vegetables in there. Now we're not going to waste those little bits of caramelization and flavor that are stuck to the pan there. I'm going to put a bit of water in there and deglaze that. Now these mushrooms are ready and rehydrated now. So what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to take them out of there with a slotted spoon. You can see how much they've swelled up just in that half hour of soaking. Last few little bits, don't want to waste any of that because it was hard work picking those mushrooms and drying them. So we don't want to waste a single bit. Now, these rehydrated dried mushrooms, just to make them a bit easier to handle, we're going to squeeze some of the liquid out of them and put that back into the jug. Now that might seem a bit counterintuitive because we've just spent all that time soaking them. But I don't want to waste any of that liquid on the chopping board. So the rehydrated dried wild mushrooms are there and I'm just going to run the knife through them until we've got a kind of minced up texture because I don't want great big stringy pieces of mushroom in this mixture. It's going to be spoonable. It's got to be spoonable onto a flour tortilla. So I want to go for sort of finely chopped texture. The other thing is obviously that will help for more of the flavour of these mushrooms to come out if they're finely chopped. So back over here at the slow cooker, wild mushrooms go in. The stock that came off the mushrooms will go in. Now I'm just going to pour very carefully here because there's nearly always a little bit of grit in the bottom of this. So I'm just going to pour carefully and stop short of the end. There we go. So that little bit there's probably got a bit of sand in it, so we will discard that. Next, our 500ml pack of tomato passata goes in there. We're not just not going to throw that away just yet because there's still some left on the inside of that packet. Okay, and the pan, all I did there was just put a little bit of water in it off camera, and so that's the deglazed juices off of that pan. So let's give that a stir and figure out how much more liquid we think that needs. Yeah, I'm going to say that that probably isn't quite liquid enough to hydrate all of those uh, lentils and peeled wheat, but what we're going to do now is just under the tap, we'll half fill this tomato passata carton. So half filled that with water under the tap, just going to pinch that off like that and give it a little shake. And then we don't waste any of that flavour. So there we go, that looks good. That's quite liquid at the moment, but those lentils and peeled wheat are going to soak up a lot of that juice. So lid on and switch it on and that's going to cook for six hours. I almost forgot I said I was going to put butternut squash in this as well so I've chopped a piece of butternut squash off, I've peeled it and then I'm actually just going to grate it. double handful of grated butternut squash is going to go in there. Now I don't expect to be able to recognize that 
ingredient at all by the time this is cooked because that's going to cook away and almost dissolve into this dish but it's going to give it a bit more of a saucy sort of texture so there we go we just got to put the lid back on and leave that to cook okay we're about an hour from the end of cooking and let's have a look so those lentils and the peeled wheat has really swelled up and absorbed a lot of that tomato and other juices I think what we'll just do is now add I've got a small tin of red kidney beans in chili sauce I'm just going to put them in there I didn't put them in at the start of cooking because I don't want them to cook away to nothing so I'll just stir those in there and let them cook through in that final hour of cooking so lid back on and then in an hour's time we'll give that a taste okay a total of six hours has elapsed since we put this in the slow cook and it's looking and smelling very good let's get this dished up let's get some of it out into a bowl and we'll go and assemble a burrito okay so let's assemble our vegan burrito now remember the objective here was not to explicitly replace meat it was just to make something that's wholesome and satisfying and tasty however it's a burrito so normally you'd have a lot of cheese in there now cheese is not vegan compatible because it's dairy now so let's think of something else that can replace the cheese in our burrito something a bit creamy so I've got here some red pepper hummus so I'm going to put a nice dollop of red pepper hummus on there like that okay I think we'll just have some nice young spinach leaves in there as well like that then we're going to have a nice helping of the vegan burrito filling not chili this is a lentil and peeled wheat casserole I suppose you could call it I think also just to make it a bit more interesting I've got some tortilla chips here just plain unseasoned ones I think we'll crumble a few of those over the top like that and because I made this without any chili in it I'm gonna put some sriracha hot sauce over the top to give it a bit of fire so let's wrap that up like so oops I had a little bit of a spillage there and let's give that a taste mm. that's really really good it's really tasty the cumin is fantastic with, with the beans and the lentils. Mmm. It's a really, really satisfying, wholesome, hearty burrito there. Now, normally you might have rice or something in a burrito, but don't forget we've got the peeled wheat in this mix. So we've already got all of our carbohydrates in there, but we've infused flavour into them. Mm. I am really enjoying this. So there we go, that is my recipe for vegan burrito filling. You could repurpose this to have it with pasta. You could make it into a, um, you could add more beans and things into it. And if you wanted to, you could put in some of those vegan fake meats like corn sausages or something like that and turn that into a sausage casserole. But really, there's no need. This is a fantastic, nutritious, tasty, wholesome filling and nicely balanced meal all in itself. I'm going to be taking some of these to work with me this week. 
So there we go, that's my vegan burrito filling. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.